It's very much a quietness, a presence, a centeredness, and acting from the truth, and being in a state of joyous equanimity. That is the self-realization process. You realize self. You circumvent ego, and you act from self, which is love, which is truth, which is then expressed as compassion for all. Because when you're in tune with self, you're also in tune with the self of the other, because it's the same material. Namaskar. So, I'm new here, but... What's your name? My name is Philip. Yes. If I am to guess about the essence of the teaching, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, um, it's about listen, follow, and then act, and surrendering into the inner silence, and then acting out of the love that is received in the silence, and then deconstructing the ego through that silence, and giving the, or extending the love, a deeper reflection that is deeper than body to body and mind to mind, but in the recognition of the reality of love which is underlying our experience. Well, it's a way of interpreting what I have said. It isn't precise, but it's, it's a start, you know, for understanding conceptually what is being said here. So, um, what this teaching, when it's crystallized to its fundamentals, is saying is, you are Philip. What's your mother's name, Philip? Crystal. 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 Yeah. And where were you born? In Sweden. Which place? Stockholm. So you're Philip, son of Crystal from Stockholm. You take that as a limited identity because you don't want to increase that identity because then it takes the form of ego, obviously. So you keep it extremely minimal. And that Philip, son of Crystal from Stockholm, is in this moment, right now, in a state of action. So in each moment there is action, action in this moment. If there is an action coming from this, from Philip, son of crystal from Stockholm, then that action emanates from or is impulsed by something which can be the truth impulse, which is the antar guru, the inner master, the antar atman, the inner residing individualized soul within each one. Or his action or this action of Philip is made to happen by the ego, which is a collection, it's an ego lie, it's, it's a collection of various suggestions which come from that socialization process and also from the genetic inheritance. So there you are and your choice is to act either from that truth, if you are able to discern it at all, because the louder the ego is, the less you are capable of discerning that impulse. If you are in a state where you are able to discern that impulse, you go with the impulse, you go with the truth action. So, you train yourself to move with that truth action, 
by bending in a surrender state to the truth itself. This idea about the soul or the truth or the center of your being, being silent is now deconstructed even further. To find that it is not silence, but an impulse, it's solidity of an impulse. You can almost say electromagnetic in nature. It's an actual material thing. The soul is not a conceptual experience of silence. It's not happening in the head. It's happening materially in the body. Atman is a material thing. So you train yourself to sense that. Of course, there is resistance in the system because who wants soul to be material? It's the only thing that is not tangible. So let it be that way. Let it be that silent vast. But it is not a silent vast. It is an impulse within the system. And from that impulse, this Philip is acting and acting and acting, acting. Actually moving moving, doing, doing, from the impulse, from the impulse. The moment Philip acts from the ego, there is suffering in the system. Either it's material suffering, physical suffering, or it is emotional suffering, or it is conceptual suffering, or it is creative suffering, or it is the suffering of being unable to feel one with anything, or it is what is called the pluriform suffering, which is the inability to know anything of what's going on around, to sense or feel or, or know simply by being in touch. That is also a kind of suffering when you just don't know. You're fundamentally a human being and therefore fundamentally a conceptual being that has emotional and material knowledge, but doesn't have transformative knowledge because that has not yet been experienced as a base station in your system. That would be experienced by the next beings that follow the human beings on the trajectory of time. So the challenge is to be able to train the system to live from the truth at all times. And the way to do that is to bend down. You come from, from Sweden and probably have never been you know, taught as a child to bend. The very idea of bending to anyone is actually alien to uh, a culture with a very, very deep inherited tradition of only bending to the savior, you know, to the prophet, but not to everything. As compared to, say, a subcontinental culture where you are trained to bend to everything. You bend down to a tree, you bend down to a river, you bend down to stones all the time, you know, various gods expressed as stones, you bend down to all your parents and your grandparents and your aunts and uncles and older brothers and sisters and, and, and gods and gurus and so it's like you have to train the system to bend if you are meant to live in the truth because the truth is not outside, you are the truth. You are an expression of the truth. This Philip is an expression of the truth not an expression of ego. The ego, when he lives from it, brings him suffering. And when he lives from the truth, he is in a state of equanimity and joy. It's very, it's very quiet. It's not this blissful happiness of being outside the system and, you know, bliss states. It's not that. It's very much a quietness, a presence, a centeredness, and acting from the truth and being in a state of joyous equanimity. That is the self-realization process. You realize self. You circumvent ego and you act from self, which is love, which is truth, which is then expressed as compassion for all. Because when you're in tune with self, you're also in tune with the self of the other, because it's the same material. It's like, you know it when you drink a glass of water, what water is. And if there's water there and there's water here, then you know what that is. And so you're capable of expressing compassion. So that 
in a nutshell is how you can describe what is taught here or spoken about here. The idea being that grace is purifying the, the mental impurities and it's ongoing and in the extension of, of being external and meeting other seeming people, we can recognize that there's no past really attached to any person that you meet. And if there's no past in you, I can let go of the past in myself. If I see you without a past, I can free myself from my past associations. Is this something that is... When you are in surrender to your soul, to the individualized soul, what happens is, is that you start to live increasingly in this moment. And in this moment, as you say, there is no past, and nor is there future, it's just this moment. So when you're looking at the other, the other is also a product of this moment, or is present in this moment, and then again in the next moment, and again in the next moment. So it's not that you need the other as a reflection, but your own experience, independent of any other, as you said, so-called so -called person, is based on your surrender to the truth, surrender to love, surrender to the soul, surrender to the master, surrender to whatever name you want to call it. That is that centeredness which is you. When you are in surrender to that, there is no past. You've already let go of your past when you do that. There is no past in this moment. That's the great difference between the spiritual journey, the spiritual path, and psychologizing of experience. When you psychologize an experience, you're looking into the past for what caused it. When you are spiritual, what it means is you recognize the moment only. There is no past when you are in touch with the divine within. And of course, you move into the conceptual, you're aware that there's a past and there's a, you know, you have, you have memories and you have projections, but the purity of that experience of thisness is in this moment tuned in to truth, the truth of your existence. If you're surrendering to the quiet and non-conceptual realm of your experience, you, you don't think and plan as you previously did with the conceptual mind. You simply act in a moment-to-moment -moment basis through presence. Then the question of faith comes. Since you, you surrender everything that you previously knew that kept you somewhat safe, you are more safe with the truth than you are with the falsehood. That is something everyone would agree with. And when you live a life which is not tuned into the truth, you are fooled by the ego that you are safe, but actually you're not. And when you surrender to the truth, you are safe but the ego will continue to frighten you and tell you not to go with the truth. You are safer if you go with the noise of the ego because it suits society, it suits greedy capital, it suits systems if those living within those systems obey the ego. The ego is created by those systems. If you are ready to surrender to the truth and go with it, there will be more physical coherence, contour, strength. There will be more emotional experience. It will be deeper, 
more vibrant and you won't be the victim of it because you allow yourself to experience emotionally which you otherwise cannot because you become the victim there will be a greater degree of conceptual clarity precision of thought ability at logic sharper rational abilities and also the ability to think as little as possible because thinking is not a way of knowing and you will definitely widen and deepen your ability at any form of creativity which is required for you you know for your particular circumstance you'll be able to create with a greater ability to to make associations possible in a transformative sense i mean for example if you are a poet your poetry will evoke associations with others which is the aim of art to evoke as many associations as possible and create super structures of associations so that too will strengthen you will also have the ability to to deepen into the occult world into knowing what is beyond what is what is available to the senses and you will also be able increasingly to experience oneness with everything because you are one with yourself you know if you're outside if you're in a spiritual experience where you're cosmic where you are where you've blissed out then you're not present here if you're not present here you cannot have these experiences you cannot because you have to be present for that lateral expansion in consciousness to happen you'll be outside of course you'll be blissed out you'll be able to describe what perception is when you have no attachment to the body you won't be able to be powerful in this existence which is why you're in a body anyways if you are meant to have cosmic experiences then you're a spirit then you don't have to be in the body it was okay for human beings to have mapped the cosmos and that has happened over thousands of years of meditations and practices to go out but it is known now and it is known that you have to reintegrate so you'll also increase that ability to be one with the other you know and coming to the last realm of consciousness this is what is called the agnya chakra that ability to just to know it's called trikala drishti in sanskrit it means the ability to know the past present and future in this moment it means the ability to have this x-ray vision you look at somebody you just know what's going on like you don't need to to think about it you receive the information all the time anything that is within the periphery of your vision you just know and even behind you where you can't see so that that level of of power in the system and not power to have power over other people if at all then it's power to empower others to be in a state of awareness and presentness which is rare in this world because everyone is seeking to escape the limitations of the body or if that is not undertaken then seeking to experience life through the senses as much as is possible without realizing that there is the truth that is here to guide your actions and that you can decide if it's the truth guiding your actions or impulsing them or the ego